Okay, Eloquent Java, Chapter 2, Program Structure. And my heart glows bright red under my filmy, translucent skin, and they have to administer 10 cc's of JavaScript to get me to come back. I respond well to toxins in the blood. Man, that stuff will kick the peaches right out of your gills. Why wise poignant guide to Ruby? In this chapter, we will start to do things that can actually be called programming. We will expand our command of the JavaScript language beyond the nouns and sentence fragments we've seen so far to the point where we can express meaningful prose. Expressions and Statements In Chapter 1, we made values and applied operators to them to get new values. Creating values like this is the main substance of any JavaScript program. But that substance has to be framed in a larger structure to be useful. So that's what we'll cover next. A fragment of code that produces a value is called an expression. Every value that is written literally, such as 22 or psychoanalysis, is an expression. An expression between parentheses is also an expression, as is a binary operator applied to two expressions or a unary operator applied to one. This shows part of the beauty of a language-based interface. Expressions can contain between parentheses is also an expression, as is a binary operator applied to two expressions or a unary operator applied to one. This shows part of the beauty of a language-based interface. Expressions can contain other expressions in a way similar to how substances in human languages are nested. A substance can contain its own substances, and so on. This allows us to build expressions that describe arbitrarily complex computations. If an expression corresponds to a sentence fragment, a JavaScript statement corresponds to a full sentence. A program is a list of statements. The simplest kind of statement is an expression with a semicolon after it. This is a program. It is a useless program, though. An expression can be content to just produce a value, which can then be used by the enclosing code. A statement stands on its own, so it amounts to something only if it affects the world. It could display something on the screen. That counts as changing the world. Or it could change the internal state of the machine in a way that will affect the statements that come after it. These changes are called side effects. The statements in the previous example just produce the values 1 and true, and then immediately throw them away. This leaves no impression on the world at all. When you run this program, nothing observable happens. In some cases, JavaScript allows you to omit the semicolon at the end of a statement. In other cases, it has to be there, or the next line will be treated as part of the same statement. The rules for when it can be safely omitted are somewhat complex and error-prone. So in this book, every statement that needs a semicolon will always get one. I recommend you do the same, at least until you've learned more 
about the subtleties of missing semicolons. Bindings. How does a program keep an internal state? How does it remember things? We have seen how to produce new values from old values, but this does not change the old values, and the new value has to be immediately used or it will dissipate again. To catch and hold values, JavaScript provides a thing called a binding or variable. Let caught equal 5 times 5. That's a second kind of statement. The special word, keyword, let, indicates that this sentence is going to define a binding. It is followed by the name of the binding and, if we want to immediately give it a value, by an equals operator and an expression. The previous statement creates a binding called caught and uses it to grab hold of the number that is produced by multiplying 5 by 5. After a binding has been defined, its name can be used as an expression. The value of such an expression is the value the binding currently holds. Here's an example. Let 10, T-E-N, equal 10, the number. Console.log, T-E-N times T-E-N. Ah, and it prints 100. When a binding points at a value, that does not mean it is tied to that value forever. The equals operator can be used at any time on existing bindings to disconnect them from their current value and have them point to a new one. Let mood equal light, in quotes, console.log mood, that should print light, mood equals dark in quotes, console.log mood, that should print dark. Notice you get light and dark printed here. You should imagine bindings as tentacles rather than boxes. They do not contain values, they grasp them. Two bindings can refer to the same value. A program can access only the values that it still has a reference to. When you need to remember something, you grow a tentacle to hold onto it or you reattach one of your existing tentacles to it. Let's look at another example. To remember the number of dollars that Luigi still owes you, you create a binding. And then when he pays back $35, you give this binding a new value. Let Luigi's debt equal 140. Luigi's debt equals Luigi's debt minus 35. Console.log Luigi's debt. That gives 105 because 140 minus 35 is 105. When you define a binding without giving it a value, the tentacle has nothing to grasp. So it ends in thin air. If you ask for the value of an empty binding, you'll get the value undefined. A single let statement may define multiple bindings. The definitions must be separated by commas. Let O-N-E equal 1, T-W-O equal 2. They're separated by commas, and it ends with a semicolon. Console.log O-N-E plus T-W-O, 
that's in parentheses, semicolon. And that will do the number 1 plus the number 2 to give you 3 as the result. The words VAR, there, and CONST, const, can also be used to create bindings in a way similar to let. VAR name equals, quote, AYDA, unquote. Const greeting, G-R-E-E-T-I-N-G, -E -E equals, quote, hello, space, unquote, semicolon. Console.log, parentheses, greeting plus name, close parentheses, semicolon. And that produces hello, Ada. So that plus concatenates the two things together. And the space from hello puts the space between the words. The first VAR, short for variable, is the way bindings were declared in pre-2015 JavaScript. I'll get back to the precise way it differs from let in the next chapter. For now, remember that it mostly does the same thing. But we'll rarely use it in this book because it has some confusing properties. The word CONST stands for constant. It defines a constant binding which points at the same value for as long as it lives. This is useful for bindings that give a name to a value so that you can easily refer to it later. Binding names. Binding names can be any word. Digits can be part of binding names. Catch-22 is a valid name, for example, but the name must not start with a digit. A binding name may include dollar signs or underscores, but no other punctuation or special characters. Words with a special meaning, such as let, are keywords, and they may not be used as binding names. There are also a number of words that are reserved for use, in quotes, in future versions of JavaScript, which also can't be used as binding names. The full list of keywords and reserved words is rather long. Break, case, catch, class, const, continue, debugger, default, delete, do, else, enum, export, extends, false, finally, for, function, if, implements, import, interface, in, instance of, let, new, package, private, protected, public, return, static, super, switch, this, throw, true, try, type of, there, void, while, with, yield. Don't worry about memorizing this list. When creating a binding produces an unexpected syntax error, see whether you're trying to define a reserved word. The environment. The collection of bindings and their values that exist at a given time is called the environment. When a program starts up, this environment is not empty. It always contains bindings that are part of the language standard, and most of the time it also has bindings that provide ways to interact with the surrounding system. For example, in a browser there are functions to interact with the currently loaded website and to read mouse and keyboard input. Functions a lot of the values provided in the default environment have the type function. 
A function is a piece of program wrapped in a value. Such values can be applied in order to run the wrapped program. For example, in a browser environment, the binding prompt holds a function that shows a little dialog box asking for user input. It is used like this. The prompt is, quote, enter pass passcode, unquote, close parentheses, semicolon. And when you run it, you see up here, eloquentjavascript.net says, and then the words enter passcode that was in the quotes. Executing a function is called invoking, calling, or applying it. You can call a function by putting parentheses after an expression that produces a function value. Usually, you'll directly use the name of the binding that holds the function. The values between the parentheses are given to the program inside the function. In the example, the prompt function uses the string that we give it as the text to show in the dialog box. Values given to functions are called arguments. Different, fun different functions might need a different number or different types of arguments. Let's try running this. And it says you can play. Cool. And then you can reset, uh, wait, um, revert to original code. Cool. The prompt function isn't used much in modern web programming, mostly because you have no control over the way the resulting dialog looks, but can be helpful in toy programs and experiments. The console.log function. In the examples, I use console.log to output values. Most JavaScript systems, including all modern web browsers and Node.js, provide a console.log function that writes out its arguments to some text output device. In browsers, the output lands in the JavaScript console. This part of the browser interface is hidden by default, but most browsers open it when you press F12 or, on a Mac, Command Option I. If that does not work, search through the menus for an item named Developer Tools or similar. When running the examples, or your own code, on the pages of this book, console.log output will be shown after the example, instead of in the browser's JavaScript console. Let x equals 30, semicolon, console.log, parentheses, quote, the value of x is, unquote, comma, x, close parentheses, semicolon and that prints what's in quotes the value of x is and then the variable x was assigned 30 so that gets printed from the console.log though binding names cannot contain period characters console.log does have one this is because console.log isn't a simple binding it is actually an expression that retrieves the log property from the value held by the console binding. We'll find out exactly what this means in Chapter 4. If I change that to 10, and it'll change to 10. If 
I mean Rupert. Okay, return values. Showing a dialog box or writing text to the screen is a side effect. A lot of functions are useful because of the side effects they produce. Functions may also produce values, in which case they don't need to have a side effect to be useful. For example, the function math.max takes any amount of number arguments and gives back the greatest. Console.log parentheses math.max parentheses 2 comma 4 close parentheses twice semicolon. And 4 is bigger than 2 so it prints 4, the max of 2 and 4. When a function produces a value it is said to return that value. Anything that produces a value is an expression in JavaScript, which means function calls can be used within larger expressions. Here to call math.min, which is the opposite of math.max, is used as part of a plus expression. Console.log math.min 2 comma 4 plus 100 gives 102. Let's see, the min of 2 and 4 is 2, and then 2 plus 100 gives 102. The next chapter explains how to write your own functions. Control flow. When your program contains more than one statement, the statements are executed as if they are a story from top to bottom. This example program has two statements. The first one asks the user for a number, and the second, which is executed after the first, shows the square of that number. Let the number equal number parentheses prompt parentheses in quotes, pick a number, close quotes, and close parentheses twice, semicolon. So the number equals number of prompt of pick a number. Console.log of quote, your number is the square root of close quotes plus the number times the number. Oh, prompt asks you to pick a number. All right, let's put five. Okay. Your number is the square root of 25. Oh, that's cool. The function number converts a value to a number. We need that conversion because the result of prompt is a string value and we want a number. There are similar functions called string and boolean that convert values to those type. Oh, up here number converts what you put in the prompt from a string to a number. Here is the rather trivial schematic representation of straight line control flow. Conditional execution, a single arrow. Not all programs are straight roads. We may, for example, want to create a branching road where the program takes the proper branch based on the situation at hand. This is called conditional execution. Conditional execution is created with the if keyword in JavaScript. In the simple case, we want some code to be executed if and only if 
a certain condition holds. We might, for example, want to show the square of the input only if the input is actually a number. Let the number equal number parentheses prompt pick a number. If exclamation point number dot is NAN parentheses the number bracket console dot log in quotes your number is the square root of of close quotes plus the number times the number. With this modification if you enter parrot no output is shown. this run code um, pick the number 4 it gives 16 reset for to original code let's see let's run this again let's pick a word tree and it doesn't do anything um, so you can enter parrot or any other word. So apparently the exclamation point number is dot is NAN, not a number, parentheses the number. Um, okay, we'll see. The if keyword executes or skips a statement depending on the value of a Boolean expression. The deciding, uh, the, de the deciding expression is written after the keyword, between parentheses, followed by the statement to execute. If number dot is NAN, you know, not a number, function is a standard, the, num the number dot is NAN function is a standard JavaScript function that returns true only if the argument it is given is NAN. That's not a number. The number function happens to return NAN when you give it a string that doesn't represent a valid number. Thus, the condition translates to, quote, unless the number is not a number, do this, close quotes. NAN is capital N, lowercase a, capital N. The statement after the if is wrapped in braces, Brack, uh, open bracket and close bracket in this example. The braces can be used to group any number of statements into a single statement called a block. You could also have admitted them in this case since they hold only a single statement. But to avoid having to think about whether they are needed, most JavaScript programmers use them in every wrapped statement like this. We'll mostly follow that convention in this book, except for the occasional one-liner. If 1 plus 1 equals equals 2, console.log, parentheses, quote, it's true, close quotes, close parentheses. And that will print it's true because 1 plus 1 does equal 2. The 2 equals, check to see that. The, tr it's, the value is true, so it prints it's true. Um, I'll continue in the next video. Thank you.